To begin the analysis, we will set up the problem using a 1D analysis uh, that employs the Richards equation. So we select 1D and then under fluid flow, porous media flow, we select the Richards equation. And this is going to be a transient problem. We're interested in how the water uh, changes during rainfall and after rainfall, so we'll make it time dependent. And we'll start off by setting up the geometry. This column will be 7 tenths of a meter long. So we'll just make a line that's 7 tenths of a meter long. And we need to define the properties. So the way I'm going to do that is by putting, including variables here. And then I specified a variety of variables in the, um, in, in the PowerPoint. And um, the way that I'm going to do that is by importing a file that has those variables in it. So I already set that up ahead of time. And I'm going to import this file parameters for unsat example. Oops. I need to I need to import it. I need to load from the file. Okay, so I do that and I get these parameters. Now when I set up the parameters here in the Richards equation physics, I'm going to use these variable names. Okay, so I still need to though do this, right? Um, when I when we open the Richards equation, there there may be some default settings in the parameters, but we need to override those and put in our own values. So first thing we need is the fluid. So this will be um, water that will set at 100 kilograms or 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The viscosity is 0 0.001 pascal seconds. And let's see, this is the uh, saturated water content, and we call that theta R or theta S. For saturated and the residual is theta s. Now you could just type the numbers in here but this allows us to use those variables that we defined in the file um, through this uh, variable name. So compressibility of the fluid um, I'm going to use user defined. The default here is 4 times 10 to the minus 10 per Pascal, which is the compressibility of water. Uh, the compressibility of soil, I'm going to, I think that's the name that I used. I'm going to just check that. So there's, there's the list of variables. So soil compress is the, the variable name. So that looks good. And then these are the Van Genuchten parameters, the um, water tension model. So alpha I defined, and n, and I called this EL. OK, so let's go and check that. There's n, there's alpha, there's EL. OK, row w, actually. So let's go back and do this typed in a thousand let's type row W um, and did we include viscosity I don't have viscosity as a variable so let's just do that let's call it VISC and make it zero zero one and then we can go here and use that variable name And that allows us to define the properties for this analysis in terms of um, uh, all in terms of variables, except I guess for this one uh, term here that is a, a default value. Okay, so that sets up the 
the properties of the problem we need then to set up boundary conditions and so for this problem the uh, the initial analysis is done using no flow conditions at the top and bottom so we will use mass flux and we will select all boundaries and we'll have it be zero okay so that that prevents flow into or out of the uh, column and now it's going to be important to set up the initial value. This is a transient problem so we need to have initial conditions. Uh, if we specify the pressure head here let's try specifying it at um, minus a thousand pascals. The next thing we need to do is check the initial values we'll specify the initial pressure head as a minus 1000 pascals and that'll be the uniform over the soil column and essentially what we're saying here is that we take some soil we mix it up and the water content in the soil is uniform the water content is related to the pressure head so by specifying a uniform pressure head over the column we're really specifying that the water content is uniform and by making it negative we're saying that it's uh, less than saturated water content. Now if we make this a bigger negative number more negative so it's we add a zero there that would be a larger negative uh, initial pressure head which would be a lower water content and if we make that uh, a, a, a smaller negative number then it's a higher initial water content. So we can start with that, then Richard's equation, uh, we should go back here actually, and there's one thing we need to check. This problem will involve uh, gravity, and so we make sure that the gravity effects are on, and we're using the x-coordinate, uh, in, and it's plus x, and the, this g uh, underlined const is the uh, gravitational constant that is uh, included as a default in the model. So we'll use that. All right, so let's see. We can go ahead and try running this. We'll try the default mesh uh, as a starting point. Uh, we need to set up a time for the run. So initially, we'll say we're going to run over uh, 10 to the fourth second, 10,000 seconds. That's about three hours. And we'll have 25 values. So we'll go ahead and, and use that as the time setup. Um, let's see, okay, here's the, here's the default mesh. So this is a very coarse mesh, um, particularly for problems involving unsaturated flow. Nevertheless, we'll try this um, and see how it works for, for the, uh, just as an initial cut. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so there are the results. This shows the pressure. Um, as a function of distance along the model. This is the, the arc length and let's make it a coordinate uh, length just to be a little more clear. So we go and switch the x-axis data to expression and we'll use x for the expression and we'll replot that. And so we can see this blue line is the water content or the, the, the pore pressure initially and it's constant and then the green is the first time step and the next time step that and the next one that's saved and so on. And you can see after uh, six or eight or so of these uh, saved time steps we get a profile that looks like that and essentially doesn't change after that. So this goes to steady state of this linear pressure distribution like we see there and we also want to take a look at the moisture content so we can go here to the y-axis data on the plot and change that over to there dl theta that's the liquid volume fraction or the volumetric water content and if we plot that there we get the initial volumetric water content is the blue and then you can see the green red and so on 
this is how the water content is changing with time. And what happens is that if we start here at the blue, in this region, the water content is increasing and in this, cre in this region is decreasing. So th this is the bottom of the, the, the column and the water content here increases and it becomes saturated at 0.4 um, water content and uh, then it becomes desaturated right in here. And also just like in the pressure we see that some of these profiles show the change and then uh, it converges and we had 25 profiles, remember, so um, we only see changes in the first six or eight of them, and then we reach a steady state. Okay, so this is really what we're after. This is the uh, pressure, and this is the water content uh, profile at steady state. So this, this gives us the result at the end of stage one. So we've got this vertical column, and we've, cl we've got valve closed at the, the top and the bottom, and so the next step will be to open the valve at the bottom. So to do that, what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to start another study. And this study will allow us to solve a new problem. This is the problem where we've, we, we open the valve at the bottom. It'll be a time-dependent study. And let's see, I'm going to collapse that one so it shows up right, right there. And what we'll want to do is run this. Let's try running this for a day. So we'll go, um, well, let's just do it, uh, let me change this. And it's still set up for seconds, so we'll start at zero and end at a one e to the fifth seconds. And we'll look at, let's just try 50. Uh, different regions here or different uh, time steps or times when the model will save the uh, results and what's going to be different here though is that I want to use the results of the analysis that we just conducted as the initial conditions for this analysis so the way to do that is if I'm in this first line here for this uh, this defining this study and I go here to values of dependent variables and I have this initial values of variables solved for so for the initial values I want to have it be uh, user controlled and the solution that I have from study one and I'm going to have the times at that 10,000 second mark. Okay, so that's uh, equilibrated and we'll use that as the initial conditions. Okay, so um, when we run this, we're, we won't affect that initial analysis that we conducted, but we'll allow, a, a, we'll basically allow a, another analysis to be done that uses that initial analysis as the starting point. All right, so for this analysis, we're going to want to have water drain out by opening the valve and we'll simulate that by defining the pressure at the bottom so we'll, we'll put in a, a pressure boundary condition and we'll select this node here sometimes it can be difficult to select that by clicking on it so what we'll do is go here under selection and have all boundaries and that's going to be I think it's going to be boundary number one so we'll just erase number two. So there's there's uh, boundary number one that we've selected and we make that pressure equal to zero. Okay so now that's boundary number one up here under mass flux if we click that that was how we specified both boundary conditions last time but what we can see now is that um, boundary number one is overridden. So when we had this one, this mass flux, we initially set up one and two, but because we've defined the pressure here and that comes after the mass flux, we over, override it. Okay, so we could go and erase that. We could select it and press minus, but I'm not going to do that because um, I may want to go back and, and run this model the way it the way it's set up here. So it's sufficient to set it up like this where this 
uh, pressure boundary condition overrides the mass flux. Okay, so that all looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so I'm going to go to this and raise this add study window. Um, and so here are the results. And let's see, I'm going to I'm going to go here and I'm going to reduce I'm going to try running this for 10 to the 4th seconds again instead of 10 to the 5th. And let's try doing that. Okay, so here are the results. This is the pressure. Um, and the initial pressure with a linear function that goes up like that. And then at the beginning of the analysis, we take the pressure at the bottom and we make it equal to zero. And then the pressure looks like this um, as it evolves through time. And so we're also going to be interested in the water content. So we'll switch that over. And it's, it was, I'll just type it in here. It was DL theta. So there's the water content as a function of time. And there are many curves there. Um, but let's, let's see. Let's go and modify this plot a little bit. We, can, we don't have to look at all of those. Let's go and say, um, so we have 50 curves. Let's go and start uh, at 1 and go to 50 and step by, if we step by 5, then that will do every 5 profiles. Okay, so there, there's every 5 profiles and that looks pretty good, although not quite clear. See how these are all evenly spaced? Maybe this hasn't really quite equilibrated. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go back here to the study and run it. Let's go back and now indeed run it for 10 to the fifth seconds, just to make sure that it's equilibrated. So run it again, and now we go and we get this default plot again showing the, the moisture content and um, now you can see these are, are more closely spaced it looks like we might even want to run it a little bit longer than than 10 to the fifth seconds so let's make it uh, twice that long and go to well actually um, let's keep it like that okay and instead of changing the number of time steps Let's go and take a look at this mesh. Here's the mesh that we've been using. This is the default mesh, and I don't know how many points there are, maybe 20 points. This is really quite coarse. Um, and for this problem of unsaturated flow, um, we have a, um, well, certainly when we do the rainfall, we'll have this wetting front where there are some steep gradients. And it, we may want to try, well, for that problem, we'll definitely need a a finer mesh, but what I think we'll do here is let's see if, about the effects of uh, changing the mesh at this point. So if we go to edge, uh, an edge is, uh, uh, well, in this, in the, the lingo of finite elements, the, a line is called an edge. Sometimes that line forms a, a boundary, but sometimes it's just a, a one-dimensional uh, feature and so we'll specify edge here and then size and so let's see so size we can specify the um, well actually rather than size let's delete that and right click on edge and select distribution so now we can just specify the number of elements and let's just specify 50 elements here and if we build all there we can see we've got a lot, a lot more closely spaced and we might even do 100. So we build all and then we can go and rerun the study 
and there's the result. And actually, we don't really see much change. So that's good news um, because it means that there really wasn't much mesh effect. We'll still stick with that uh, 100 elements in the mesh, though. Um, but maybe we want to go and step this up a little bit. Let's just go and run it for 2 times 10 to the fifth seconds. There, okay. So now we see those uh, consecutive profiles essentially being one right on top of another. So we feel pretty sure that, that the system has equilibrated. And what we see at this point is that the moisture content profile, this is the bottom of the column. So this is saturated right here at the bottom. And it stays fairly saturated for the upper or the bottom tenth of a meter. But then from about this point upwards, the this is the water content here as a function of distance. We have just a relatively linear um, water content varying from about 0.37 to about 0 0.3, 0.23 um, uh, the volumetric water content. Okay, so this will be the starting point for the next analysis where we have a rainfall that causes infiltration into the uh, into this lysimeter column.